Hello and welcome to another video from movingelectrons.com in our Power P series. Our topic for today is voltage drop. Voltage drop is an important calculation because if the voltage drop is too high uh, on your circuit, then the load equipment, the end user, the equipment that's being used might not function properly or might even fail with time. So therefore, what the NEC does is the NEC recommends a 5% voltage drop on feeder circuits and a 3% voltage drop on branch circuits. So let's read our question and then what we'll do is we will first try and understand a little bit more about voltage drop. Uh, what is the math behind it? Uh, how do we get these formulas that we're going to be using? And then we look at the steps to solve this problem. So what we've been asked to do is to calculate the voltage drop on a single phase 120 volt circuit, uh, which uh, the length of that circuit is 100 feet. And at the end of that 100 feet, it's feeding a load of 50 amps at 0.9 lagging power factor. What we've been also given is the line characteristics of that feeder circuit. So we've been given a resistance in ohms per thousand feet and an impedance in ohms per thousand feet as well. So I'll quickly draw a single line of this uh, once we get into the problem. But before going there, as I said, let's first try and understand voltage drop a little bit better. So let's look at a generic single line diagram. So let's say we have two buses and then we have a line that connects these two buses on one end we have our source and on the other end we have our load so there is an impedance here so that is z this let's say the voltage here this is the sending end bus so this is the sending end voltage this is the receiving end voltage if now, and then obviously there's a current that flows through this I. Uh, this impedance is composed of a resistance and an inductance. So there is a voltage drop here, which is IZ, and that's composed of IR and IX. So just looking at this, we realize so there's there is a sending end voltage, then there's a voltage drop IZ, and then you have the receiving end voltage. So your receiving end voltage is the sending end voltage minus whatever the voltage has dropped on the circuit here. So let's call that VT. So again, if here you see if the volt, as I was mentioning, if the voltage drop value is really high, then your voltage receiving end would become really low and your um, your equipment might not function properly. And that's the reason why we have to do a voltage drop calculation to make sure it's in certain limits and it's within acceptable values. The best way to understand this and the way to derive these formulas is, is to look at a vector diagram of what's really happening here. So let us draw, this is going to be the voltage receiving is going to be R reference value we know that the current if this is an inductive load would lag our voltage so that is our current there and the angle this will make is going to be our power factor angle what we also know is ir would be in phase with i so let's draw ir here Ix would be perpendicular to Ir. So let's draw this perpendicular to Ir because that's going to be 90 degrees apart. And then the resultant of this is what is Iz. And this resultant here is your voltage 
sending. So there you see the voltage send is the maximum value. It's composed of VR plus IZ, which is what we have here. Your VS is your VR plus the drop that you have in the circuit, right? And from there we get this voltage receiving is voltage sending minus the voltage drop. Now, if I just extend this circuit here, this is your X axis. If you really want to see the magnitude of IZ, what that is, is you'll have to draw your, this line, you have to imagine it coming down here. So that will be a curve here. And that value, sorry, let me just draw that straight here, that's straight here. So that's VR and that in essence is your actual voltage drop. So that we're going to label that as VD actual. But this curve, curve makes the equation a little bit more complicated as opposed to if we just take a straight line here and then this value here is your approximate voltage drop which in most cases is sufficient and this is easier I'm saying that because let me use red here what we can say is this this line here this distance here is nothing but I R cos phi and this line here which is this distance is going to be nothing but I X sine phi rather it's actually this line here and why is that that is because if you look at this triangle here so this angle we know is phi this angle this angle is phi here not this complete angle right so this angle is phi and then i we know is in phase with ir so even this angle is phi so let me just redraw this here so you have ir and you have 90 degrees to that is your ix and uh, let's use a different color so you're saying this is one triangle and this is one triangle that's 90 degrees there this is 90 degrees here and this is 90 degrees here so what we've done is we've said this is i r cos phi and this is i x sine phi this is just trigonometry i will hopefully you already realize this but if not i'll just quickly run through that this angle i explained is your power factor angle phi if you look at this triangle here, this is a right angle triangle with this being the 90 degree angle. This angle would be 90 minus phi. And if you look at this triangle and then this right triangle here, this angle is 90 degrees. This angle is equal to this angle because these are vertical angles. So this is 180 minus this and then this angle is 180 minus this so if this is alpha this is also alpha so you have 90 degrees you have alpha in this triangle you have 90 degrees and alpha therefore these two angles have to be equal so this angle is phi here as well so if you look at this right triangle the big one where the hypotenuse is i x then you have this side as equal to i x sine phi and if you look at this small triangle here where the hypotenuse is IR, this side here is IR cos phi. 
So again, this is basically just trigonometry, but what I'm saying, what we want to get to is that the approximate voltage drop can be given as IR cos phi plus IX sine phi. So that is voltage drop, and this is called voltage drop line to neutral. Basically, it is voltage drop in one conductor traveling one way. So that is IR cos phi plus IX sine phi. So this is the vector diagram that is used to get this equation that you might have seen before and that we use to calculate our voltage drop. As I mentioned, voltage drop, this is the line to neutral. Uh, it's called the line to neutral because it's voltage drop in one conductor traveling one way. One conductor traveling one way. From this, we get our voltage drop line to line is equal to two times voltage drop line to neutral for single phase circuits and we get voltage drop line to line for three phase circuits as root three times voltage drop of line to neutral. So that's the value we'll be using and that's the formulas I've said here voltage drop line to neutral is IR cos phi plus IX sine phi and because this is a single phase circuit in for our problem here we'll just be multiplying it by two to get our voltage drop line to line and from there we'll get our voltage drop percentage so this is basically what i wanted to talk about just a little bit of the theory behind voltage drop uh, i hope it gave you a little better understanding of where we get this formula from and um, why voltage drop is IR cos phi plus IX sine phi. So now let's just use this formula in our problem that's been given and uh, that should help us to get the uh, solution. So let's look at all the steps. The first step is what we do is we convert R and X to ohms because what we've been given is ohms per thousand feet. So simple way of doing that is R is equal to, so we've been given 0.8 ohms per thousand feet we multiply that by the length of the circuit that we've been given so that's 100 feet and that should give us a value of 0.08 ohms similarly we do that for x we've been given 0 0.06 over thousand feet and we've been told that the feeder circuit is 100 feet so the value we get is 0.006 ohms so we have our r and x the next thing we'd like to look at is the power factor. That's our next step. So we've been given 0.9 lagging factor. So that implies that cos phi is equal to 0.9, which implies phi is cos inverse of 0.9, which gives us a value of 25.84 degrees. And we'll put a minus here that is because this is a lagging power factor. Let's now look at what sine phi would be. Sine phi would be sine of negative 25.84 degrees, which gives us 0 0.44 minus. But now this is an important point. I triple E convention tells us that lagging power factor lagging power factor implies positive sine phi and leading power factor implies a negative sine phi value this is an IEEE convention so we will ignore this minus sign here because we know it's a lagging power factor and what the value we will use is 0.44. So let's now get into step three. So our step three is going to be, we're going to calculate our voltage drop line to neutral, which is IR cos phi plus IX sine phi, which is going to be our I value is 50 amps. That's what We've been given in the question, I believe. There you go, that's 50 amps. So we're gonna put 50 
r we just calculated as 0 0.8 cos phi is 0 0.9 plus 50.006 times 0 0.44 and if you plug that into your calculators you should get a value of 3.732 volts our step four is calculating our voltage drop line to line. Since this is a single phase circuit, we know it's going to be two times voltage drop line to neutral, which will give us a value of 7.5 volts. And our final step is going to be calculating the percent voltage drop, which is nothing but 7.5 volts. This is a 120 volt system times 100%. So that should give, give us something like 6.25%. So that's going to be our voltage drop. That is the answer. So let's look at the options that we've been given. And then we have option D as our correct answer. So I'm hoping that's clear. Uh, it's a simple voltage drop. Uh, the calculation is very simple once you know what formula to use. Um, I just wanted to give you a little bit of the background um, so you know where the formula comes from. Uh, most times you're either given the R, R and X value or what you've been given is uh, the uh, feeder uh, feeder size. So you, you've been told it's a number 10 or a number 12 or a 350 MCM uh, cable. So you can look up table 9 in the NEC and you can find your R and X values in uh, ohms per thousand feet. And then again, just follow the same steps that we've followed here. Uh, only thing to be careful of is just remember this, uh, the sine phi is going to be positive if it's a lagging power factor. And the other thing is if it's a single phase, you multiply it by two. And if it's a three phase circuit, you multiply your line to neutral uh, voltage drop by root three. So with that, I'm going to give you a quick sample problem. So let's say you have, I'm just gonna draw a circuit very quickly. Oops, uh, let me just erase that there. So let's say that's your impedance and that's your line and that's your receiving end. Um, that's your receiving end uh, voltage, that's your sending end voltage, that's your impedance, that's your current I. So let's say you've been given that the source is a 480 volt, three phase, 60 hertz source. Uh, this is a 200 feet conductor and the impedance value is 0.4 plus J.1 ohms per thousand feet. And you've been given that the load is a 200 amp load, which is operating at 0.85 lagging power factor. So uh, find out the uh, voltage drop percentage and uh, leave your answers either in the comment section below feel free to send me an email at nimishatmovingelectrons.com and for more videos coming up do subscribe to our channel i love to hear from you send me any feedback that you have i'm hoping the topic that was covered today was clear and if you have any questions uh, once again send me an email or just uh, leave a comment in the comment section below and i'll try to get back to you um, as soon as i can i am making more videos in the Power PE series for anyone appearing in those exams and hopefully they are helpful to you. So till next time, take care and have a good day.